guys, it's Friday. I hope everyone's day is off to an amazing start. I wanted to start today's video off with a very popular DIY. I know that you guys have seen this. Um, it's been out forever. Um, you can find it on Pinterest. It's been all over the blogs. And believe it or not, I've actually even seen it in my local Hobby Lobby. I am talking about the mirror effect. Yep, the mirror effect. What is the mirror effect? Well, for those of you who do not know, it is when you take the mirror spray paint, I actually have it right here. You take this mirror spray paint and you are able to transform just ordinary glass that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree, uh, Michaels, anywhere, any clean glass you can transform into this just beautiful piece of almost artwork. It just looks amazing. So. In my last video, I want to thank uh, my subscriber, Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy, thank you so much. She was like tan when I um, showed the um, uh, uh, jars and glassware that I picked up from Michaels and um, Home Goods, and I think I had a few pieces in there from the Dollar Tree also. She was like tan, make sure you use the mirror spray paint. Get out of my head, Kimmy. Um, but thank you so much, and let me say too, I just really love the, um, I don't know, the dialogue, the relationship that I have with my subscribers, you guys are just so awesome. I love the back and forth that we have in the comments and even in the videos. And just to let you guys know, I just really do appreciate it. And I actually look forward to all of our chats um, that we have here each week. So again, thank you so much, Kimmy. Really do appreciate you looking out for me. But, um, but yeah, anyway, back to the uh, DIY. So, yeah, so I, I actually use the mirror spray paint, but you guys know that I'm getting ready to do a dinner party. And I don't know if I let you know what kind of dinner party it is. It's a bridal um, dinner party here at the house. And so even though I use the mirror spray paint, I wanted to kind of kick it up a notch. And I'm going to show you guys what I did here in a little bit. I actually have some over here that I actually finished, but I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod in a minute so that I can go outside and um, actually do the, you know, the little tutorial. But so here's some right here. So these are some that I already finished right here. These did not come this way. This was actually just clear glass. So it was this one just clear glass, this beautiful little, uh, Picture right here was clear glass. They all started out looking like this little one right here. Um, and I have a few more to do outside. But so what I did was, again, using the mirror spray paint to do one layer. Well, actually it was like five or six layers of that. And then I took some black um, flat spray paint and it gave it this really antique look. And I just think that for the theme and the look that I'm going for, adding the little antique and you know what this is also this is called the mercury the like a faux mercury finish that's what it is and so i just really think it um is going to kick the overall look of the party up a, a couple more notches um and i also love how here it just really works well with the table and so these they're not gonna um this isn't actually their final um spot for the party i just kind of have them placed here on the table to kind of show you guys how if you have this particular table and you wanted to leave them you know say permanently on your table as a little accessory you could really do it it really works well with this actual mirror table that i have here and again um, I have a video on where we have purchased all of the dining room furniture. It was actually from Z Gallery. But yeah, it just really works well with this mirror table, but it is not gonna stay here. I just have it kind of staged right here for right now. It's probably gonna be over in the um, in the kitchen. And I don't know, who knows? I may leave a few pieces out here um, in the dining room, but we'll see. I will come back once I have everything placed for the party and um, show you guys just how you know how I set everything up. I think it's gonna be so pretty. I am so excited to do it. Um, I just love doing parties and this one is just really, really special. Like I said, it's a bridal um, themed um, dinner party. So anyway, let me get outside and get this tutorial done so that I can get on with the rest of the day. We actually have a few more places, a few places we need to go today to pick up some more party stuff. So I'll see you guys, I guess, outside. <laughs> 
Okay guys, you're gonna have to forgive me for this one. I went to put in the footage um, from the tutorial and accidentally deleted it, I'm so sorry. I will, however, leave a link below for a really good tutorial on the mirror glass. So look for that below in the description box. I'm right here, what I'm showing right now is just a before and after of how everything turned out and I really, really love it. I will come back um, when it gets closer to the party and show you guys just the finished placement for everything. All right, guys, we made it to, we're gonna look around for a little bit. Okay, please ask if you have questions. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. All right, guys, so we made it to the restaurant supply store and we're gonna look around for a little bit and see if we find anything that we can, um, you know, actually use during the party. I think what I really want is um, a couple of chafing dishes. How about a gigantic pepper grinder? Eric the chef. <laughs> He's a nut. Eric, move! Oh my gosh. Eric. Eric, I think I need this industrial size rice cooker. That's a lot of rice. That's a lot of rice right there. Might be a little bit too big. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead, look around. Like I said, I think I want to get a couple of chafing dishes and, um, all right, I think we found them. Did you find everything all right? Yeah, I think we actually just found the aisle we're looking for right here. Okay, okay. Thank you. Chase, come over this way. All right, I think we found them. Let's see, do they have a price? Oh, let me look at some of the round ones. All right, they have a good selection, but they are a little bit on the expensive side. So let me see if we can get some help and um, find some that are a little bit more reasonably priced because I don't think I want to pay 749 bucks, but it's cute though. All right, Eric had, we're just about finished, but Eric is around here playing around. The store is really, really neat, like I keep saying, but. Yeah, it's he, like you see all the stuff that when you go to a restaurant that they use, like this is the stuff that holds your sweetener. Mm -hmm. They have the down here, the little ice cream cups mm -hmm. that you get when you get frozen yogurt. Yeah. This is really neat, the little salt shaker thing. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, and when you, the little thing they put on your table when they stick uh, the number on yeah. it. Yeah, when pretty. they're looking for you and see what table you're sitting at. It is really yeah. neat. Yeah. All right, well. So babe, you think we've decided on what we want to get? Yeah, I think so. All right. All right, so we're just gonna get two of the chafing dishes that were over there. They're not the absolute perfect ones for what I'm trying to do, but I think we'll be able to make it work. We'll be able to make it work. All right, so let's go ahead, head over there and pick those up. We are at Lowe's. We're getting some um, items to have some towel repaired in the kitchen. Um, and we needed some stuff for the yard. We're headed outside right now. My favorite area of Lowe's. We need to get some pine straw. Eric, did I hear you say you needed some plants? Uh, you would never hear me say that. I think you said you need some plants. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said you need some plants. All right. Just keep straight, Chase. All right, they have so many beautiful, beautiful things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did we ask you guys what you like better, Home Depot or Lowe's? I'm partial to Home Depot, actually. But Lowe's was pretty close to us today. Let's go this way, Chase. So yeah, Lowe's was close to us today, so we're at Lowe's. <sighs> so we're gonna go ahead look around, make our final purchases, and we're gonna head out. I think we're gonna grab some dinner and then we're gonna, you know, head home. Hi guys, so I didn't pick up a whole lot yesterday at the um, restaurant supply store. Honestly, I didn't see a whole lot that I could use, but I did go ahead and get two of the chafing dishes 
do you guys say chafing dishes or chafer dishes or chafer pans or I don't know I say chafing pans or chafing dishes and um, here on the box let's see if you guys can see that it says chafer I don't know I say chafing pan okay and so I got two of them here's one here the other one is uh, still in the box and you guys are not going to believe the um, the price that I got them for they were like $40 each so I think that was a good a, a good price they are not the ones that I really really wanted I wanted the, the more domed shaped ones but I don't know that price was kind of steep I guess I could have shopped around um, I don't know but you know when you want something you just really want to go ahead and get it so you know Eric said maybe he'll get me one for a gift or something you know here in the near future so we'll see but um yeah so this is this is the one that I got and like I said I got two of them um let's see what it, it's a it's an eight quart size it uh has a nice finish on it of course it comes with the lid it's cool to the touch you have your water pan um it comes with your little Let's see if I can get it here. Comes with your fuel holder. It doesn't have any fuel in it. Didn't really like that. So we'll have to find the fuel for them. And I'm pretty sure that we can get those from um, um, from Party City. And I like that you can fold it. The legs fold down um, for easy storage. Um, we do have a big pantry, but it's always good to, you know, have space so that you can continue to add to your entertaining um, arsenal. But today we are going to head out and just do some fun stuff. We don't really have anything all that serious planned. Oh, today's Sunday, if I didn't, what's, the, no, today's Saturday. Happy Saturday, guys. Um, so yeah, we don't have a whole lot planned. So we're just gonna go hang out. Um, we'll probably have dinner out um, somewhere today. Maybe get some, you know, yogurt or something. So. <laughs> Looking at puppies. You see that one back there? <laughs> oh my gosh, God. We're looking at puppies today, guys. We're looking at puppies today. to stop talking about you. You know, don't cut it out. You're okay? Yeah. Oh my God. They are gonna be right here. Oh God, some of them just look so beautiful. That's Ziggy. Ziggy is a hound and a terrier. He's looking like he's kind of scared. Kinda. I feel like I'm in that, you know that sad commercial that comes on TV with Jim. Yeah, Jeremy. we're playing, yes. Ooh, what do y'all think about this guy? No, baby, stay in your boy. Well, guys, we did not leave with the puppy today. However, we did make a lot of new puppy friends and when the time is right, we will absolutely be heading back to our local Atlanta Humane Society. The topic for today's tea time oh. is, before we do the tea time, so many of you have been asking questions about um, our homeschool, how do we do it, things like that, and there's a squirrel outside in the tree looking at the I see him, he's hugging the tree, yeah. staring at us <laughs> with hate in his eyes. Right. All right. All right. Um, yeah, but anyway, the most recent request comes from Kenya Wynn. Kenya wants to know how how do we do it? She says she's 
looking to start homeschooling her kids next year and she said that you know she really doesn't know where to start so what I would say is Kenya you first have to ask yourself what type of teacher are you do you have the patience for it and are you going to be the teacher who's going to be able to take care of every subject I'm not sure you know the age of your children um, but let's just we'll just use our son Chase for an example he is on his way to the eighth grade and um, so I know that my strong suit is going to be your more language driven type subjects your you know your more uh, maybe health related type subjects whereas your sciences and math I have to turn that over to Eric he is of course an engineer and so you know he's very good at those types of things and it really um, is a it's a team effort, right? So we have a good kind of working relationship mm -hmm. and we're able to kind of bounce back and forth. And sometimes we'll even like, you know, integrate our yeah. lesson plan. Mm -hmm. So but mm -hmm. yeah, that's one thing you gotta figure out. Yeah, and I think uh, <laughs> I think the temperament and let me say this too, and this is gonna sound like my marriage isn't for everybody thing. Homeschooling is not for everybody. You have to have mm -hmm. a temperament. And one of the things that will happen you will find that you are a lot harder on your own children. Oh yeah. Because you know what they're capable oh, of. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You get things, a lot more frustrated. Things, yeah. um, for those of you who don't know, I was a teacher for you know over 10 years before I stopped working um, and we just decided to homeschool Chase. Um, again, those of you who are new, Chase has never been to school. I've always homeschooled him. So immediately after having him, I stopped working. So things that my students could get away with and they didn't get away with much i was you were me i was a tough teacher you were a drill sergeant i was they called me drill sergeant um but so the things that my students could get away with chase can't even try it he can't even attempt to do it so uh, anyway long story short can you first um determine what type of teacher are you determine your strengths and weaknesses because even as adults there are those subject areas that we have our strengths and weaknesses in the math that chase is doing right now is really looking yeah i mean you know <laughs> math is one of those subjects that we've all taken math which you forget mm -hmm. and if you hadn't done math in a long time you know math can get tricky and yeah. algebra you get into algebra and mm -hmm. pre-algebra mm -hmm. and all this stuff and even calculus yeah. and yeah. So and so yeah, it's it's also about. it's one thing to know a particular subject right. area, but it, it, there's another thing to be able to teach it. And I think that gets back to temperament, right? Mm -hmm. Are you a good explainer? Yes. Right. Yes. yes. If you don't have that personality where you're able to be patient and explain mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. to people, then, yeah, you yeah. can't just go into algebra, calculus, trig, and you or know, language arts, or language arts, yeah. even you know, writing your different essays and subject verb agreement, right? Program. All of that tenses yeah. and things like that. Yeah. How are you going to now be able to take it from your head deliver it to your child in a way that he or she can understand and so Kenya that brings me to my next point what type of learner are your children you know are they visual do you have to explain a lot of things to them are they more tactile so these are a lot of the things that you're going to have to be able to you know determine sit and kind of figure out before you actually jump into the actual task of homeschooling also, are you are you very organized? You mm -hmm. got a lot of organizing mm -hmm. to do. And then mm -hmm. are you doing multiple children in different grades, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And with the grade thing, keep in mind, the older your child gets, the harder it's gonna be because it's easy to teach one plus one is two. Yeah. It's a lot harder to teach four X over two divided by three to the twelfth power equals. <laughs> so yeah. it gets harder and harder. It's easy to teach them to write a sentence. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, in, in eighth grade, they got to write a five page essay. Exactly. About whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And I think one of the challenges that we're having right now with Chase and again, Kenya, I don't know the age of your children, but um, Chase is a know it all. When I come to him sometimes with a with a, uh, an, an essay topic, he really starts now to challenge me on whether he feels the topic makes any sense. Uh, he, he feels that a lot of the stuff that I come to him with is just a time waster. And I tell him um, when he, if he decides to actually go, actually go to school, and we are thinking about traditional school for his eighth grade year, you can't really, you know, question the teacher's motives or reasons for handing out a particular um, subject or topic. Yeah, so what is your, you know, I think kind of what we're saying there is what is your child's temperament, temperament right? You got to yeah. think about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. How's your child going to respond and react? And also, how are you going to socialize your child 
outside of homeschool because you've taken away some of the, a lot of the socialization. So mm -hmm. with Chase, we we always keep him in an yeah, activity. Yeah. Um, when you go into homeschooling, what I would do and what we really didn't do um, initially, start looking around your community, see what type of organizations there are for um, homeschool children. You may want to look at um, uh, extracurricular activities such sports. as tennis, uh, golf, yeah, basketball. We did. Yeah, we did every sport. Soccer, you know, swimming, yeah, yeah, things like that. Martial arts. Mm -hmm. So those are good, but also, um, Kenya, now once you've assessed all of that and you've determined the type of teacher you're gonna be, the type of learner your child is gonna be, now you want to determine, again, I don't know the grade, but let's say your kid is in third grade. What do I have to teach my third grader? Well, being an, an, a former educator, we've said it before, Eric and I have several degrees between us, we kind of knew what you know what our third grader was supposed to know but then as it gets up into upper grades like you know seventh and eighth grade you know you're doing more than just your typical math or just your you know your basic english um so you can either go with a lot of the curriculums that are out there that you can buy there are a lot of them online but we didn't feel the need to do that because we knew the type of learner our kid was we knew the type of teachers we were so we didn't feel like we had to go and subscribe to um someone else's curriculum per se i we didn't feel that we need we needed another teacher telling us how to teach our right. kid we didn't we didn't um we didn't need that you may not need that right, um, it just depends it's, it just depends. And so, there are there are books out there that yeah, are really good. Yeah, that's Amazon, what I was say. The internet makes this a lot easier than it used to be. Oh, there yeah. there are books out there that are literally this is what your third grader should know. Yeah. Right. You can pull yep. up the standardized test mm -hmm. for your state for the grade level. Yeah. And then there's just so many learning aids between YouTube and the teaching websites. There is a lot. Yeah. Right. So you really want to be plugged in and connected and mm -hmm. have great high-speed internet at your house and just resources you know mm -hmm. computer resources that you can yeah. use because it will save you yeah yeah and uh, there are a lot of schools where you can go and pull up their actual curriculum online yeah. you'll see what the third graders are doing this yeah. year or what the fifth graders are doing this year and so you just go and like eric said you go to amazon you order that language arts book now a lot of times you will not be able to get the school's actual language arts book that they are currently working on I'm, that's going to be almost impossible to do a lot of the schools now they order just enough books so they're not like ordering a shipment of books for the school and then you know putting the excess on amazon or ebay they're just not doing that but what you can do you can get the language arts book that they used a, a previous year or two years back and then just take what is there let's say your kid is a little bit stronger than what's going to be in the language arts textbook you know, do a lot of supplemental work. Um, the internet, like Eric said, is an absolute great resource. And then, you know, you've been in third grade or fifth grade or even eighth grade before. Come on, you know you can make up some of the, um, you know, some of the extra materials, you know, you know yeah. yourself. That's what, we do a lot of that. Um, I knew I know when I was teaching, um, my administrator, he really didn't like for us to kind of just focus on textbook work or, you know, focus on worksheets and things like that. He really wanted us to kind of take what we had and, you know, kind of pour it out into the kids. And I would and I would kind of close and say what mm -hmm. you're talking about. One of the advantages of homeschooling, right, that that quite frankly, and it's just it's a shame a lot of the you know schools lack is. Mm -hmm you can be a lot more creative, right? Yeah. So bring creativity into it, bring mm -hmm. field trips. And also, you know, you would be amazed how much time you save homeschooling because oh, yeah. getting your child up in the morning, yeah, getting dressed, Yeah, that was the other that stuff, question yeah. Kenya asked too. She wanted to know, and then we'll wrap this up. She wanted to know, um, you know, what time do we get started? You know, we get started when we want to get started, quite frankly, <laughs> you know. I, I don't have to get get chase up and you know try to jump out into traffic or i'm not trying to get yeah. dressed and you know and, and run off to work eric actually works from home so we get started really when we want to get started now are we getting started you know at three o'clock no typically our day around here starts around eight o'clock yeah. you know 7 30 8 o'clock um and we spend i would say on average four to five hours yeah. you know sometimes six hours a day on schoolwork we don't have to be in um, a school setting from you know 7 30 you know 4 30 however long the kids are in school right now because he's not competing with the he's not competing for the teacher's attention right we are right there you know what i mean you know a lot of the kids now when they go to school you know 
it's them in a classroom with you know 22 23 other kids well it's not like that he is getting all of the one-on-one -on -one attention that um eric and i have to offer and i think if you're able to do homeschooling right and and that really requires one of the parents not work yeah. it really does improve your work-life balance mm -hmm. if you're able to do it right it's mm -hmm. again it's not for everybody you got to think about all the things we talked about but you save so much time by not being in that school rat race yep. of getting up catching the bus getting the kids dressed so it does improve the work that life squirrel is out there jumping in my flower pot well i mean it's you set it up for them it's inviting so. what are they doing in the front yard so sorry, let's sorry. Uh, speaking of unwanted house guests oh, yeah. we're gonna segue <laughs> yeah we'll, unwanted say, house we'll segue into the tea time because i gotta go out there and handle this squirrel real quick so you... <laughs> um yeah so the topic for today's tea time is <laughs> house guests it's right. summertime, you know, you're doing a lot of travel. Either you're going to someone's house to be a house guest, someone's coming to your house to be a house guest. Yeah. We have a few tips and things that we would, you know, kind of yeah. suggest you stay away from or, <laughs> you know, encourage your friends to stay away from as they come to visit you. <laughs> and if, if, you know, I know a lot of you guys watch these videos for, you know, kind of your household tips and you show a lot of the rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a guest room yet. Yeah. We, we will have one. We're getting one built out in the basement. Okay. We don't have one on our main floors yet. Yeah. And that is on purpose mm -hmm. because in the past we had some bad experiences with house guests at some, you know, in our first house or whatever. Yeah. Even before then, yeah. even when we had a, apartments, you know, straight out of college, we, yeah. we had a few house guests and it was just like, I remember the one house guest. Let's talk about the first subject. You know, their children were kind of unruly. So house guests with unruly kids. This yeah. house guests, their children yeah. broke, broke so, our so, toilet. So, so our first tip, <laughs> when you come to visit someone's house, if you have kids, please don't leave your kids unattended. It is not the responsibility yeah, of the host to, take to now to take care of your kids. It's, it's not our responsibility. There's a difference between being a house guest and a babysitter. I think if you want to, if you're a house guest and you want to, the people to watch your children, uh -huh. you got to establish that beforehand. Cause yeah. I might not want to have you as a house guest yeah. and watch your kids. And watch your like, kid. Like, wait a minute now. Which one are we doing? I'm going to need some type of uh, payment or right. something. We this isn't the daycare. This isn't a bread and be uh, a bed and breakfast with uh, childcare privileges. Like, right. no. So, cause what happened to us was we had house guests and we didn't discuss it beforehand, but they just decided, hey. We just hey, thought it would be understood. Yeah, they just decided, oh, we're going to run to the store and leave the kids with you guys. We were like, And they didn't to just us. run to the store. They were gone. For they a were gone. They went to the uh, just a regular old sto uh, store at the corner, and then they were at the mall. Like, when they left, it was damn near dinner time when they got back. They yeah. left that morning, yeah. and they just left. They yeah. were on vacation, and unbeknownst to us, like we said, we were responsible for their kids for a long time for we hadn't planned time. anything out or anything yeah. like, like what if we had something to do yeah. during you know the span of the day just very inconsiderate and uh those were your friends anyway those are your <laughs> friends so, and and also when you leave the kids you know some if you have a lot of children yeah. or they are rambunctious right so you bring your children over they make a mess they destroy stuff we had your friends children tore up our toilets <laughs> right so and left they yeah. tore up the toilet and left and we come home and we're like, what happened to the toilet in the world? Yeah. So, you know, you got to, again, know your children's temperament. Not all your children might not be ready to be house guests mm -hmm. and you might need to talk to them before they're house guests. Yeah. Tip number two. Okay. What you don't do. Okay. Unless, uh, unless again, it has been established beforehand. Don't get up cooking 1 30, 2 o'clock in the Well, you're talking about two things, right? You're talking about staying up late and cooking. Y yeah. Okay, so staying up late. Okay. Look, now we are all adults. At some point, we need to go to sleep. Okay, you're up at 2 o'clock in the morning just loud watching TV. So what's the etiquette here? If you're and then you're cooking. Eric, wait, remember we were sleeping? And yeah. we smelled bacon downstairs. So, so let me ask the viewers the question. What's the <laughs> etiquette, right? So the first question is, you're a house guest, but that person, that, that house that you're staying over, let's say they go to sleep at 11. That's mm -hmm. their, they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah, do you do. stay up later than them? And then how late do you stay up? And then how loud are you when you stay up? And what are the activities that you engage right. in while you're up in these right. people's house? Like, right. Is it okay to cook in their kitchen and eat their food? I mean, and they weren't trying to be quiet about it or anything. We just hear pots and pans right. rattling downstairs in the kitchen. And then we just hear bacon popping. At like two in the morning. It was and our bacon. And it was our 
bacon. They didn't ask or anything. And listen, now I, I do understand when you have family members come to your it's house. It's a little bit different it's, with family. It's, it's a little bit different when it's a sibling right. or, or parents or something like right. that. It's a little bit different, but just, just, you know, just friends. Like, right. no, I think you need to be courteous and respectful house guests. And, and the other point I want to make too or ask you guys, at what point do you stop going to people's houses and staying? When do you start getting a hotel? Do you outgrow that? Because there's this there's this one thing I think Eric, this is your 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 motto, I think, is after 30, you don't go and help your friends move. Okay. Right, right. You I don't help anybody move. I'm, I'm too old. Yeah, I, I stopped you doing that You know what I'm saying? Yeah, back and knee problems. No, you need to get a moving company. I'm not helping you move. So at what age do you now Stop going to sleep, you know, on your do you get a hotel? air mattress. When do you get, you know, you want to be grown and sexy. Get a hotel, I think. I think it depends on, I think you got to know, right? Don't create an awkward situation. If you mm -hmm. know your friend doesn't have a room or quite frankly doesn't want to be bothered, mm -hmm. you get a hotel. I think you, you got to know the friend in that relationship. I think we all can kind of push the boundaries. Don't use your friends. And, and I think you just got to know the situation, right? If you can kind of tell that friend is uncomfortable or they don't want to break out the air mattress, they don't have room, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you know, also, and some of this depends on, you know, if you can afford it, it's great to lean on friends that live in like right. really cool places oh, like, yeah. like if you're Florida going to, and Hawaii or something. Right, yeah. definitely. You're more exotic places, Hawaii. I mean, we were in Hawaii. It's 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 really crazy expensive there. And we would have loved to have someone there that we could have, you know, gone and kind of, yeah. you know, stayed with or, you know, places like New York, other expensive places. Right. But you know, you know, when you, don't wear out yeah, don't, don't wear out your welcome. Yeah. Okay. And then, so the last one is, and this one should go without saying, I don't know. Well, I think this is a question. Do you, are you, <laughs> are you, when you're a house guest, are you, and you're going as a couple, are you intimate? <laughs> uh... While you're on, while you're staying at that person's house. Are you, if you're staying with your parents, right. are you intimate in your former bed? <laughs> oh my gosh. Do right. you get intimate at your friend's house? I don't know. I don't even like getting intimate. In the hotel, no, you don't. I just I got a germ problem. So y'all, y'all, y'all know my issues with hotels. I uh. So if you're trying to be romantic, maybe that's a situation where you should get a yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want you doing that at, <laughs> at my house. I, I have a problem with that. Has anybody had a house guest or house guests that were a couple and suspected them of maybe being mentally, maybe heard some stuff that they shouldn't have heard? Right <laughs> now, I don't know if you remember this though. What? I remember when did that particular house guest were this couple we're talking about and their kids came to the house. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like the fact that you and I were in our bedroom just sitting in there watching TV and she came to the door of the room, of our bedroom and stood there kind of like half dressed. I don't even remember that. I remember that because after 17 years you probably brainwashed me so I can't even see other half dressed women but I do remember you thought she was too flirtatious with I, she, she was. throughout the trip and maybe that's she another issue right yeah. too much flirtation yeah. and um yeah. when they were leaving you touched her husband's chest okay. in a suggestive <laughs> manner that i did not appreciate okay. trying to get back i okay. weren't i here all right yeah thanks for watching guys be good house guests this summer bye y'all